Good afternoon. Today is Sunday, March 25th, and I have a whole lot to share with you guys today, so I'm just gonna dive right in. A few weeks ago on Instagram, I put out a feeler to see how many people would be interested in joining me for a knit along where we use our naturally dyed yarns to knit or crochet a project. I got several responses, people who said that they would love to join, and a lot of feedback saying that they would join if we would open the knit along to those who could use naturally dyed yarn that they've purchased as well or that someone else has dyed um and i think that's awesome uh, not only is this something that can encourage people to use their own naturally dyed yarns but um you know i'm all for supporting other natural dyers and another thing that was mentioned several times is that people would be interested in joining but they would want this to be a knit along that ran for quite an extensive period of time which i'm all about because i don't really like time crunches and stress so what i'm going to do is start the knit along april 1st and i think i'm gonna extend it to september 1st so that um you have plenty of time to gather plant material and dye your own yarn if that's the route that you want to take um or you can locate and purchase from a natural dyer and use that yarn. If enough of you decide that you want the knit along to run for a longer period of time, then we can definitely negotiate that. So just let me know. So this will be for both knitted and crocheted projects. You get another chance to win for every entry that you add. And I don't really care how small or large the projects are. Um, there's no restrictions on that. I feel like this knit along is gonna go for long enough that um, you could easily knit yourself like a large and a small project if you wanted to. Um, what else? I'll be running this knit along on both Instagram and Ravelry because many of the people who gave me feedback on Instagram said that they don't tend to use Ravelry very often. So what I'm probably going to do is draw one winner from Ravelry and one winner from Instagram. The hashtag that you can use on Instagram for the general chatter is natural dye knit along. And for your finished objects is natural dye knit along. FO. <laughs> I'll put them here and there will also be um, some information on the knit along in the down bar here and also in the Ravelry group. So I think that's all the details hashed out but if there's anything that I'm missing you can again look in the down bar, you can ask questions and I'll try to um, answer as many as I can. This is my first knit along and I am a little bit nervous because I've never hosted one on my own. I did the Irish Shrug knit along with Amy of Amy's Little Kingdom a while back, but let's be honest, she did most of the heavy lifting for that. So if there's something that is like glaringly obvious that I'm missing, um, you can feel free to make a comment or a suggestion. I'll take a look at it and see what I can do. Do you guys ever just find yourself talking or watching TV or something and before you know it, you have a cat in your lap and you don't even know where the cat came from and like how they got there and for how long you've been holding them. I started this episode without a cat in my lap and now I have one and um, yeah, I don't know how that happened. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that I will be opening my shop, finally, um, probably in the first week of April. I'm thinking April 2nd and I will talk about that a little bit more at the very end of the episode. So I'll timestamp it in the description box if you want to jump to that or if you guys aren't interested, you can just skip it. So um, yeah, more details to follow regarding the shop. I also wanted to mention that I am in the process of making the kombucha video and um, it's, it's in the works, so trust me, it's coming. What I wanted to mention is that because you guys voted to have the kombucha video be in a separate video, before I started knitting podcasts, I was sort of dabbling in um, video editing, trying to figure out how to use all the software and everything. And so I made a couple of just for fun um, recipe based videos. Um, the recipes are on the blog and they are two kitchen staples that we make all the time here and I can vouch for them. Um, I don't necessarily vouch for the videos, but I have, <laughs> um, they, I've had them as unlisted or, um, maybe even private, uh, because I didn't think it made sense to have them on this channel for public viewing, but because I'm going to be making a kombucha video, I figured I would go ahead and... Um, make those available again for anyone who is interested because uh, I linked to them a while back and every once in a while I'll get a comment saying I really want to watch that video. So uh, one of them is for homemade um, hazelnut chocolate spread or um, 
Nutella. It tastes different than Nutella. It's like much better in my opinion. And the other one is for a spiced chai concentrate and both are delicious and I highly recommend them. And because so many people had been asking me for a kombucha video, I decided that um, I would open a thread in Ravelry in case any of you guys have any requests or suggestions or questions or anything like that that you want me to address or a video, a type of video that you want me to make. There's a thread for that in the group now and um, you can go ahead and uh, if you're looking for a place to put that, that kind of thing, then it's there. You know, that doesn't necessarily guarantee I'm going to do it, but it, it at least lets me know because I enjoy making videos. I think they're so much fun. And if it's something that I can feasibly do, then I, I will. So I think that's it for all the little things I wanted to update you guys on. Um, we have had kind of a rough few weeks, well, rough couple of weeks, um, since I saw you last and I, yeah, I've just been dealing with some emotional stuff. I'm not going to get into it, but I think some of you are pretty perceptive and you can tell when there's something going on. So I just want to address it. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and film a video today because there's just so much to talk about. And also because kind of diving into these creative things when I'm not feeling, uh, emotionally the best can help a lot. Like that is why I do what I do because I struggle with depression and anxiety. And I think I've, a lot of you have read about that because I've, I'm, pr I'm really open about, um, mental health because I had such a uh, struggle with it when I was in my twenties. So I am very open and I try to advocate for people taking it seriously and yeah, whenever I can. Um, but that is why I do what I do, um, with regards to blogging and, um, making videos and taking pictures and all of that. It's a creative outlet to keep me focused and motivated and using those creative juices. And also like we've been doing a lot of work out in the garden. I think I mentioned that, uh, I've been trying to like redesign how our yard is sort of laid out. And we took the first steps for that earlier this month. Um, and we got some stepping stones and are laying those out and we're going to be putting in some new garden beds here as the weather gets a little bit warmer and i am hoping to go ahead and plant some seeds because i had my husband build a cold frame normally we start our seeds indoors in front of our sunny window but we don't really have the space for that this year and it, it never really turns out as well as i want the plants tend to get pretty leggy so i thought this year i would experiment with starting our seeds in the cold frame outside anyway let's talk about some knitting So my first finished object is the sweater that I'm wearing. Um, it's called, I don't know how you pronounce it. So here's the, <laughs> how you spell it. So it's designed by Lerica Fibertails. And I always say her name a little bit funny, I think. But so this sweater is a test knit and I can't go into too many details about it because she hasn't published it yet. I think it's going to be coming out before April though. Um, don't hold me to that, but I think that's what she said. So anyone who wants to knit this, it'll be, it should be available pretty soon. I just really love all the little details. Uh, I think it's just really simple, but also complex enough to keep you interested. And um, I learned some new skills. Yeah, even though I can't really talk about the, the design or anything like that, I will talk to you a little bit about some of my personal struggles. <laughs> so first of all, I've never really used Brooklyn Tweed and I do know that it's very loosely plied so you have to be careful but um, anyway the yarn broke at a really inopportune moment for me <laughs> and I ended up having to rip back the whole short row section because I couldn't get enough yarn together to, to spit splice them back together um, and also, I was very nervous about knitting the bobbles because, you know, you're kind of putting a lot of stress on just like one stitch when you're knitting a bobble, but I didn't have any problem with that. There were a couple moments where the yarn broke on me and I really 
slowed me down. But other than that, I really love this yarn. I did a lot of research before I purchased it because I wanted to make sure that it was gonna show the stitches really well. Sometimes when you have little details like this, they can get lost if the yarn is too busy. And sometimes tweeds can be a little bit too busy. But from what I was seeing on Ravelry, and this is why I love Ravelry so much, because you can like you can just do all this research to decide how the yarn behaves before you ever even buy it, and it really is a great indicator. Anyway, I'm really happy with how well it's showing all the little details in the yoke. So one thing that was a little bit of a struggle is that I knit the body to probably just an inch or two below the bottom hem, and then I soaked it and I let it dry because I wanted to make sure that everything was gonna fit really well um, and that um, if the yarn was gonna grow too much then I could rip it back. The yarn didn't grow too much. You know it softened up and it really um, kind of squished the stitches together nicely but uh, I didn't feel like it grew too much and so I went ahead and finished the bottom hem. In fact I ripped that out and then re -knit it longer later because I have quite a long torso. And then I did the sleeves and I put it on and it fit perfectly. I wasn't worried because I'd already soaked and blocked the, the most of the body. But when I went to wash it and give it its final wash just a couple days ago, um, it grew. <laughs> it grew a lot. And I don't think that this would have been a problem except that from the time that I um, sort of signed up to do this project, to now, I have changed sizes a little bit, and um, so it doesn't fit me as well as it probably would have, um, and in fact, if I were to knit this again, I might go down a size. It's a good problem to have, of course, but um, it's just a little bit frustrating because I want this to be something that I can wear forever. So what I ended up doing was... I let the um, sweater get probably 90 to 95% dry and then I stuck it in the dryer for 10 minutes. And I was hoping that it would shrink up, and it did. <laughs> but it shrunk up lengthwise rather than widthwise. So um, for instance, my arm, my sleeves, I can, you know, yank it down, but um, they were hitting like right here. And now they're, if I bend my arms, they right up over my wrists, which I really like cozy sleeves. I like to be able to kind of wear my sweaters like this. So I'm probably going to rip back. Actually, we'll probably rip back to where I stopped doing the decreases and maybe add a couple more decreases. Um, because I like the bottom of my sleeves to be a little bit tighter too. And also for the body, um, like it fits all right, but I think I would prefer it to be a little bit longer and a little bit um, a little bit less negative ease so I'm probably gonna rip back to like an inch below where I separated for the sleeves and then I'm probably gonna start adding some um, decreases in and some body shaping these are not flaws in the design at all these are problems that I'm having due to um, just losing some weight and also um, from sticking it in the dryer, which, uh, yeah, if you knit yourself something in Brooklyn Tweed, just be aware that it's probably not going to shrink widthwise very much. It's going to shrink mostly lengthwise. So my second finished object are the seed stitch socks, um, which I'm making for my friend. I think the last time that I spoke about these, I had one of them on a stitch holder and I was work I started the second one. I did that because I wanted to try them on her feet before I um, added the toe. And it was pretty hard for her to get the sock on, but once it was on, it fit pretty well. So what I will probably do if I ever make another pair of socks for her is use, instead of a short row heel, I'll use a heel flap and gusset because I think that that helps increase the instep. I think this is the instep, right? Like the distance between the heel and the... so that it can get over the foot a little bit easier. I went with a garter short row heel 
just in case because I thought garter tends to be a little bit more stretchy and squishy just in case she was having any problems. But yeah, it was still pretty difficult for her to get these over her feet. But I have a lot of pairs of socks that are hard for me to get on my feet too. And I just keep wearing them anyway because once they're on, they're so comfortable. So hopefully that's how these are for her. Yeah, I don't know, making socks for other people is kind of difficult because when I'm making a sock for myself or my husband, I basically am trying it on the whole time and I can, you know, the person's right there. Uh, I would love to knit socks as gifts for people, but I, I can't ever do that without uh, spilling the beans first just because it's so important that it actually fits. But now that I've made her a pair, actually two pairs, I have a little bit more idea of like what works for her and what doesn't. And I mentioned this before, but I am using my own naturally dyed yarn with a neutral tweed yarn from Knit Picks. And I'm really loving the way that the um, the neutral is allowing the colors from the um, from the dyed yarn to pop. It's really hard to capture it. It's a little bit brighter. No, that's about right. And I think that this is the kind of pattern that allows a variegated yarn to shine. I tend to stay away from variegated yarns most of the time because they're a little bit crazy for me. But when you knit it up with, like with a neutral, I feel like it kind of subdu subdues the whole effect. And I don't know, I find it very pretty. So I'm gonna give her these as soon as I see her next. And then my final finished object for this episode is this. And I know that it looks like a swatch, but it's actually a square for the Sister Survivor blanket project that Evelyn of the Thistle Hollow is putting on. She was following the Larry Nassar case. Yeah, I think he was the physician for uh, the girls for the Olympics and, you know, Google him if, if you don't know. Basically, it's pretty atrocious what he did. He had a lot of victims, a lot of women who came and spoke out um, during the trials and um, she wanted to uh, make this project in honor of the women who gave impact statements during the trials. Um, I think there was like 155 of them. Anyway, Evelyn sent me a message on Ravelry asking if I'd be interested in contributing to the project. And that was a little while ago and I said that I would. Um, and it's been in my mind to kind of make a square for that project for a while. Um, but this weekend, I... Like I mentioned before, I've been kind of going through some stuff and um, there was just this moment where like I needed something to work on that was comforting just to kind of take my mind off of what was going on. And so I picked up just a ball of yarn that I had like in my knitting basket. This is from a pair of socks I made a while ago. And I just, I found a pair of Need the needles that I was using for these socks, they were empty and I hadn't put them away yet. So I just took them and I cast it on and started working on it. And I just, I wanted to, you know, knit this with intention, but I didn't expect it to be something that was going to be kind of a profound thing for me. It ended up being really therapeutic because it helped me kind of get out of my own headspace and kind of think about other women and uh, sort of their pain and, and their strength, especially. And, um, yeah, I was, I'm gonna cry. Sorry. Um, don't cry, Lindsay Cheese. Anyway, <laughs> um, if you're interested in, um, in this project and where it came from and, um, would like to contribute a square, um, please check out Evelyn's group on Ravelry called The Thistle Hollow. Um, she has a post about it and she's also, um, she also has some podcast videos on her channel. Um, to explain and I think that she would like squares to be in by the end of April So she can get started on the blanket I think she's gonna give the blanket to Rachel Den Hollander who's been sort of the spokesperson for this whole um, Thing with Larry Nasser. and I, I think it's a um, Fantastic project and it's for a really good cause. So please check it out mm -hmm.
so um, a couple weeks ago I was working on a project and I went to go switch out my needles and I was I tend to use chagus for everything and um, also magic loops so I my sock needles are chagu twist minis I think that's what they're called and I love them but when I went to switch out these needles um, I don't know if you can see so you can see um, the metal piece on this needle is longer than the, the one on this one and that's because the it broke off on the join and um, I got really super bummed because these are size ones no they're 1.5s and I use them all the time um, and you know I should have seen it coming because the uh, the metal piece was actually kind of bending and every time I would uh, screw it in I'd have to kind of straighten it out a little bit and that hadn't happened with any of the other needles in the set just this one so I should have known it was coming Whoa. it has been too long since I purchased these for me to call and uh, you know complain and say hey replace these and I've used them too many times so I just sucked it up and I decided this would be a really good opportunity for me to go ahead and order the four inch tips um, so I can have two sets of sock needles. So I've been using the four inch tips to work on my latest work in progress. I'm really enjoying using the four inch tips for knitting socks, especially because they're just a little bit less bulky in the hand. And as I'm knitting, I kind of lever them and they don't hit the palms of my hands as much as the other ones do. Um, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but if you are a magic looper and um, you like knitting socks or small circumferences, you might want to try the four inch tips because I just feel like um, they're really great for socks. Um, this pattern is really gorgeous. It is the fur sock, I believe is what it's called by Melody Hoffman. And um, I'm using Croy sock yarn in the flax colorway, which is one of my favorite commercial sock yarns because um, it is a super wash sock yarn, but it doesn't have that weird, like, waxy feel to it. And the stitch definition is good. Every sock I've ever made using this yarn has been nice and durable. And um, They were having a sale at my local box craft store, and I picked up a few balls just because I knew, uh, I knew I'd want to make a couple pairs of socks. It doesn't feel weird. It actually is very nice to knit with. This stitch pattern is quite addictive both to knit and to look at. Uh, Melody, you've done it again. I don't know if you're watching, but I love your patterns. Um, I'm actually knitting these for a friend. <laughs> yeah, I've still only managed to get one pair of socks out for myself this year, so I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to meet the box of socks knit along. However, I tend to work on socks a lot in the warmer months just because um, it's small and I don't have to like drape it over my legs when it's really hot outside. I think there's still hope that I might be able to knit myself 12, 12 pairs of socks by the end of the year. So I guess this is really the only work in progress that I have to show you guys this week because I've been putting all my knitting time into this sweater and um, so the shawl that I've been working on um, it really hasn't grown at all since I showed it to you guys last because I just haven't had the time but hopefully I'll have it finished by the next time I, I uh, film a podcast. We'll see. Let's talk a little bit about what has been going on in my dye pots. So a couple weeks ago I was playing around with modifying with iron and um, I don't know if you recognize this yarn. I showed it to you last time but last time the purple was much warmer and um, 
I dipped it in iron for a little while and it came out this really gorgeous just like inky blue color um, this yarn is a blend of alpaca and wool but it's lovely and the only reason that I'm not going to include it in my shop update is because when I was dyeing this yarn I left the logwood in the the bath and so it created these speckles and there's also quite a bit of bark throughout the yarn which could be remedied by rescanning the yarn so that's no big deal I don't mind knitting with it in fact this is probably what I am going to use for my natural dye knit along project but it's just a shame because this this is such a gorgeous um, color and I would love to offer it in the shop so it's something that I'm hoping I can replicate in the future. So something weird, I was really expecting this yarn to change fairly drastically as well, but it really didn't change much. This is a little cooler, but they look really similar after being modified in iron. I did dye more of this yarn in logwood, but I used extract instead of uh, bark and it came out cooler. Same yarn base, but this is with extract and this is with bark. I did play around a little bit with superwash. So this base is a um, 80-10-10 merino wool cashmere nylon base. And this was dyed with avocado and then dipped in iron. It's really cool because the areas of the yarn that were ecru really kind of turned out more white because the iron toned the color of the yarn and I twist dyed it and stuck it in the water and you can see how it, it changed parts of it into blues and purples and I did the same thing with this was onion skin and walnut and then modified with iron and this was avocado and onion skin modified with iron. And this is actually one of my favorites. I dyed this using um, lavender. It was just dried lavender that I had had in my pantry forever. And um, it came out a nice pale yellow. And then when I... Uh, modified it with iron it turned into this sort of greenish gray color i think that's a pretty good representation so that was really cool and then this one i dyed with walnuts and then modified it with iron and it just turned the brown a little cooler gave it a little bit more depth I haven't used this sock base to knit myself a pair of socks yet. Um, I got it from bareyarns.com, but I think I like it a lot more than the sock yarn that I got from them that was just a 2575. I could just kind of tell that it's gonna work into a better fabric. I also wanted to mention that I've been dyeing play silks, which was suggested to me by Lynn Seden, uh, or Seden. You'll have to let me know how you pronounce your last name, Lynn. Um, of raising little shoots on Instagram. Anyway, I've heard of play silks before, but I didn't really know that much about them. And so I did a little bit of research and realized that um, they're used for sort of open play and kids go crazy for them. So I ordered 30 from Dharma Trading Company and I've dyed probably 15 or 20 of them already. And I've given them to my daughter to play with and she goes absolutely crazy for these. Um, and I can totally understand why because they can be a lake or a pit of lava or you can tie them around your shoulders and make a cape or you can um, put them around your body and, and turn them into a dress or clothing. And these are just the kind of thing that um, you can use for all different kinds of things. So I've been trying to dye these a little bit brighter than... Uh, normal which has kind of proved to be a little bit more difficult than I thought 
for instance, this I dyed using Quebracho. <laughs> and every time I've seen someone dye with Quebracho, they get this crazy bright pink, like way brighter than avocado pink, right? Well, in my case, I've gotten these sort of taupey pinks, which I don't have a problem with personally, but you know, I've been trying to dye these for kids, so I thought maybe brighter colors would be a better way to go. Um, but it's, it's kind of funny because like here is the um, pink from K Bracho, and here is pink from some avocados. Same base. <laughs> But this avocado pink actually turned out quite, quite bright compared to what I normally get on a non-super wash. Um, and I think it's just because I moored into the yarn this time. Typically, if I'm going to dye with avocado, I don't mordant beforehand because it doesn't really need it. The avocado has plenty of tannins. Um, but I wanted to try it out. And yeah, it's quite bright. In fact, this yarn kind of took it differently throughout the skein, which is, I think is really pretty. It's creamy in some places and more saturated in others. Uh, I'm not sure why the Quebracho turned out more taupey, but whatever. So yeah, let's talk about the shop launch for a second. The plan is to launch April 2nd. I still need to set a bunch of things up to get it ready. So um, I'm hoping that there's not going to be any delays on that, but if there are, then I will send out a newsletter or, uh, write a blog post. I'll try to update you guys in any way I possibly can, but I do want to, um, talk a little bit about sort of where I'm seeing this going. Uh, I think it would be really great to eventually get to a point where I am selling mostly domestic sourced wools. It's been really hard for me to find sources. Uh, but I have found a couple and um, one of them is with Sestari Sheep. Um, I've used their yarn in the past. It's great. A couple episodes ago, there was a cardigan that I used with their traditional three ply, I think it is. So I knew that I liked that base. I've also purchased a bunch of their fine merino. It's, it seems like it's going to be a really great base to use, but I will update you in the next podcast and kind of show you how it is taking color and maybe I'll have some swatches to show you and things like that. For the most part, like where my heart is in regards to botanical dyeing is in um, foraging and gardening and collecting things like food scraps, um, things that are local. And um, it just feels a little bit strange to use that, those materials to dye on yarn that I've purchased from far away. So if I can find local sources of um, fibers, then that's the best option and that's kind of the direction I want to head in. So, uh, but for the first update, um, there's going to be quite a bit of a mishmash of different yarns that I've tried, like different bases that I've tried. Like for instance, um, I have a lot of this Eco Merino from berryyarns.com and it's a really great base. I really like working with it. It takes color very well, has great stitch definition. I knit my daughter a sweater in it a few episodes ago and um, it's it's held out really well so far, but you know, it's it's from overseas and I just, if I can find something that's more local, that's probably what I'm gonna use. So I did open that wholesale account with Sestari and they're great because I don't think that they have any minimums for their wholesaler, for their wholesale accounts. There is another place that's quite local to me that offers wool from the United States called Ashland Bay. And I have a wholesale account opened with them, but, um, in order to keep it open, I would need to place a $750 um, order minimum. I think within like six months. And I'm just not ready to do that yet because what if I place that order and then I dye all this yarn and like nobody wants it, you know what I mean? So I think what I'm gonna do is see how well this shop update goes. And cause a lot of you guys have expressed interest and, and have been incredibly supportive but like, what if that doesn't necessarily translate into sales, which is fine. If it, if it works out that way, then that's fine. Cause I can still use all this yarn and I definitely will. But basically what I'm saying is there's going to be very small quantities in the first update. And, um, it's going to be quite a mishmash of different bases and things until I kind of settle into what I want to do. And I get a better idea of like what you guys want. 
or if you want anything at all. <laughs> so I'm not attached to having a shop. It doesn't have to happen. Um, I really just, if it's something that you guys want and it's something that it's, that's fun for me, which it is so far, then I'll keep it going. Yeah, that's kind of where my thoughts are on that. I did sort of run into an interesting article in my in my research on domestic wool on Pigeon Roof Studios blog, which if you are someone who wants to do dyeing, whether it's natural dyeing or regular like acid dyes, her blog is an incredible resource and she's how I found out about Ashlyn Bay. And she has a rather controversial article on her blog about superwash wool. Um, and about how you can't be for domestic wool here uh, and against superwash wool because it is because of the superwash industry here and the demand for it that we have a wool industry here again in the first place. And I thought that was very interesting. I'm just going to link the article basically and you can read it if you're interested. Um, I would love to know your thoughts. These are the things I'm kind of considering when it comes to deciding what kinds of yarn bases I would want to stock in my shop in the future, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Personally, I use superwash wool. It's one of those things that I'm always feeling conflicted about, because of course I am someone who's environmentally conscious and I don't want to do something that's going to have a negative impact. On the other hand, I have always regretted it whenever I've knit someone a gift out of non-superwash wool because it inevitably ends up in the um, regular laundry cycle and they feel terrible and I feel terrible and so gifts for me are always superwash now. Whenever I knit myself or anyone else a pair of socks I always use superwash wool. It's always going to be something that I use and knit with so why would it not be something that I also dye with especially if I can support the domestic wool industry here. So <laughs> I'll link to that article in the description and you guys can check it out. It's a different perspective than what I've heard in the past and I think it's worth exploring. I don't know, I get all my information about superwash wool, you know, secondhand. So I don't really know how it's done here, how much of an environmental impact it is having here. Yeah, it's just, it's a big topic and a lot of us have very strong feelings about it. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it there for now. Um, oh, um, one thing that definitely won't be offered in the shop right away is, um, the cotton fabric, uh, the fat quarters that I was talking about in the last episode. I just don't have enough of those yet to offer for sale. Um, and what I do have, I want to be using for my own quilt making, but, um, I am still planning to eventually offer those. I just want to let you know in case that's something that you were looking forward to. I think that's it for today, you guys. I feel like I've been talking for a really long time. Um, thank you for spending your time with me today. If you are interested in joining the Natural Dye Knit Along with us, please go to the Ravelry thread or read about the rules um, in the description box below. I would love if you guys would join. Um, I am I'm really excited and um, April 1st is when we're going to get started. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.